Mechanism's the same. Uh, Anti-apoptotic, anti-scarring, angiogenic, and mitotic. So I, I, I don't have time, but I can go through every one of these tissues and show you how MSC therapy can be used. Likewise, uh, these uh, clinical indications. I'm not gonna talk about any of these. I'm gonna talk about one, which is the last thing I'll talk about, which is just a mind blower is that MSCs make antibacterial molecules. So, so this is Tracy Bonfield. She's a very talented researcher across the street uh, in Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital in Cleveland. And, and Rainbow Babies and Children's very famous for the treatment of uh, children with cystic fibrosis. Cyst cystic fibrosis are mutations in, in a transmembrane conductance regulator, a chloride transporter. And so all of the symptoms that cystic fibrosis patients have are due to malfunctions in this protein. So this protein has been cloned. We, we, we know its composition. We know what it does. And so what the guys, uh, uh, and, and there's one other piece, is that uh, pseudomonas, orogeny, infections of the lung kill kids. They can't handle that infection. Cystic fibrosis. Patients can't handle it. It's a deadly infection. And, and, and it's actually, this chronic bacterial infections is one of the most life-threatening aspect of cystic fibrosis. So the guys across the street created a knockout mouse where they took that chloride transporter and knocked it out of a mouse. If you, what we do is we take an agarose bead with pseudomonas, a known number of bacteria, and we jam it down into the lung so we know exactly how many particles of bacteria we put in the lung. The wild type animal, no problem. They handle that infection. They, they all walk away perfectly normal. The CF knockout mouse, within seven days, every single animal is dead. They cannot handle this infection, just like the kids who have cystic fibrosis can handle this. If you give these mice on day two of that infection a single, we do retroorbital injection of human MSCs, again, forbidden, forbidden, human MSCs into this mouse, retroorbital goes into the lung directly, 70% of those animals walk away completely cured. So we spend six months looking at the immune system, wrong. We'll get a couple published papers out of it. It's wrong. It's not where the MSCs work. There's a paper published in 2010 that I finally, finally read. Brilliant paper. I would urge any of the students in the audience to read this paper. They document that human MSCs make a molecule which is called LL37, which is a powerful protein antibiotic in all of your genomes. The MSCs see a particle of bacteria. They upregulate in a concentration-dependent way this molecule. And that molecule touches the bacteria, kills it on contact. And that molecule secondarily calls in macrophage to come and clean up the carcass so there's no endotoxin effect. So this molecule is in your genome and it's been studied for 20 years. It's been sequenced backwards and forwards. They're called defensins. They're in your mouth and they're in your GI tract. It's how every person in this audience controls your bacterial loads. The MSC sees a bacteria, upregulates the protein, and that's why those kidney transplants had no infection. So the MSC is now in one of those clinical trials that you couldn't read the small print. There's a clinical trial for using MSCs in sepsis. So again, uh, unanticipated, has nothing whatsoever to do with stemness. Here are all of the molecules uh, that are involved in the immunomodulation, anti-apoptosis, anti anti-scarring, etc. This is an old paper. We, the list is even bigger, but now we have to add the fact that MSCs make protein antibiotics. So I say that MSCs are drugstores for sites of injury or inflammation. They're site 
regulated, multi-drug delivery vehicles. If you have a stroke or you have a heart attack, MSCs go to these sites. The molecules they make are probably different. The mechanism's probably the same. So again, uh, MSCs, site of injury, pericyte comes off, MSC is activated. The activated MSC makes powerful immunoregulatory molecules. It makes trophic molecules. And so therefore, we know now the chemistry of how to get MSCs to make bone or the MSCs to make immunomodulatory or trophic molecules. So what's wrong with this dogmatic slide from the late 1980s? The progenitor for MSCs is a pericyte. Now, this, uh, this uh, slide is probably more correct than it used to be. So MSCs are not stromal cells. They're not part of the connective tissue. To think about MSCs, you have to think pericytes. And that changes, just changes the way you, you think about these cells. So the name of the MSC has changed. The MSC is a medicinal signaling cell. It has nothing whatsoever to do with its stemness. And so, again, please, I beg you, keep calling them MSCs, but remember their new name. So what I say at every lecture is this is a hypothesis slide. And I, in the beginning, my esteemed colleagues said that uh, this MSC in marrow was non-existent and was baloney. So what I propose is that you call these cells Arnold Kaplan cells. I'll take all of the heat for this, and, and, and you'll still remember the slide. But like every hypothesis slide, it's hugely naive. This is a very naive slide because these yellow arrows now talk about the plasticity of these cells. So I can take adipocytes, 100% pure population of adipocytes in culture, and I can get them to be 100% pure population of, of osteoblasts that make bone. They don't back up to become stem, stem cells and come down that pathway. They go through this yellow, yellow line called transdifferentiation. So my lab is also trying to figure out all these yellow lines and what the rules are for these lines. Uh, I left brochures out there for there's a course next week, you're all invited, uh, where we talk about the science of stem cells, neural stem cells, hemopoietic stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells. And, and actually the more important course is the course we teach in July, which is a business course, because the model, the business model established by Big Pharma doesn't work for regenerative medicine. So I invite venture capitalists, I invite CEOs of companies, I invite academics to come in and talk about the new economic models that are required for this new industry. And, and they're very different. Just as I propose new regulatory logics, the business logics are all different and, and they need to be properly vetted and properly discussed and, and the experience of people in this area, the, le the business lectures are fascinating because, the, again, the old rules don't work for these products. Uh, there's also, uh, every two years, uh, the, the, uh, the National Center for Regenerative Medicine in Cleveland holds an MSC meeting. We don't talk about neural stem cells or hemopoietic stem cells. We only talk about MSCs. And so this meeting is uh, in August. Again, it's for me, it's one of the most fun meetings uh, that I go to. So all the data I presented were uh, generously supported by American tax dollars through the NIH. And it's clear, should be clear, there is a huge number of people in the Skeletal Research Center uh, that whose work I, I've talked about, I'm clearly just the front man, and, and uh, I owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Thanks.